hello students hope you watched down the first part of this video as we are discussing the chapter that is related with the judiciary and in the first video we had already discussed down about the criminal laws and the civil laws the criminal laws definitely relates with the law that is included down the theft and the things like we can able to say that murder dowry harassment for the dowry all such kind of a things are included in the criminal laws and the further next one we discuss down about the civil laws civil laws is definitely related with the sale of land and the different purchases of goods okay so divorce cases is definitely harassment of divorce is considered in the criminal cases uh, harassment for dowry is considered in the criminal cases and if i talk about the divorce case definitely that is a family issue that is the reason that is included in the civil laws okay further we came to know about the indian judiciary system that includes the supreme court high court and the subordinate court and in the first video we had already discussed down in the detail about the supreme court we had came to know that there are total 31st judge uh, 31 judges in the supreme court and there are one from those 31 judges there is one chief justice of india and 30 other judges of india okay so moving further we came to know about the eligibility criteria for the supreme court judge or the chief justice of india to become the chief justice of india further we discussed down about the time period for that and after that we came to know about the different different jurisdiction jurisdiction system the first one is related with the original jurisdiction the second one is related with the appellate and the third one is related with the advisory and fourth one is definitely related with the uh, miscellaneous functions okay so moving further we came to know about the public interest litigation so the public interest litigation definitely related with the supreme court working on the per, uh, by checking out the interest of the people so definitely in this video we are going to discuss down the further extent that is related with the high court as we had discussed down the supreme court is the highest court of the whole country and high court is considered as a highest court of the state as it is being discussed in the first video as well so each state of india has it their own high court and even sometime what happens the two states share the one high court as well and even the calcutta high court is there that is considered as an oldest high court of india as it established in for on 1st july 18 62 so which high court is considered as the oldest high court of india definitely the calcutta high court is considered as an oldest high court of india and it establishes on 1st july 1862 and if i talk about india in our country there are total 24 high courts okay among the union territories and delhi alone has a high court of its own okay moving further there are uh, different union territories as well there are different state as well so the jurisdiction of each state is being controlled by their state high court so now we are going to understand about the composition of the judges appointment of judges or the chief justice in the high court definitely the chief justice is is already included in the high court as well and along with the chief justice there is other judges as well as the chief justice of high court is appointed by the president of india the same that is going on with the supreme court the same procedure is going on in the high court so chief justice is being appointed by the president of india with the consultation of chief justice of india the consultation of chief justice of india is taken by the president while appointing the chief justice of high court okay along with the consultation of chief justice of india they take the consultation of the governor of the state as well because governor of the state is considered as a nominal head of the state so he is the head of the state and we are definitely appointing the judge for the state high court of the state so definitely along with the help of or the along with taking the consultation from the governor they appoint the chief 
चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ हाईकोर्ट ओके सो डेफिनेटली द प्रोसीजर इज क्वाइट क्लियर टू यू वेन एवर वी वॉन्ट टू अपॉइंट डाउन द चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ हाई कोर्ट द प्रेजिडेंट अपॉइंट द चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ हाई कोर्ट विद द कंसल्टेशन ऑफ चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया दैट इज द जज ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट हाइएस्ट जज ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट एंड अलॉन्ग विद द हेल्प ऑफ द गवर्नर बिकॉज गवर्नर इज कंसिडर्ड एज अ नॉमिनल हेड ऑफ द स्टेट ही नो ईच एंड एवरी थिंग अबाउट द स्टेट सो ही इज एबल टू गिव अ राइट चॉइस ओके सो मूविंग फर्दर वी केम टू नो अबाउट द एलिजिबिलिटी प्रोसीजर विच थिंग्स आर रिक्वायर्ड टू बिकेम द जज ऑफ द हाई कोर्ट सो वन मस्ट फुलफिल एनी ऑफ दिस ही मस्ट बी अ सिटीजन ऑफ इंडिया दिस इज द वेरी मच इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग इफ ही इज अ सिटीजन ऑफ इंडिया ओनली देन ही इज एबल टू बिकेम द जज ऑफ हाई कोर्ट द सेकेंड वन इज रिलेटेड विद ही मस्ट बी हेल्ड अ जुडिशियल ऑफिस इन इंडिया फॉर एटलीस्ट टेन ईयर ही मस्ट बी एन एडवोकेट ऑफ हाई कोर्ट फॉर एटलीस्ट टेन ईयर so the time period for that is required that he must be an advocate advocate representing to the lawyer of that high court or any of the high court for at least 10 year to became the judge of the high court okay so the time period for the high court judge definitely relates with the high court judge retires at the age of 62 years okay and supreme court judge retires at the age of 65 years don't be confused with both of them high court judge retires at the age of 62 years and if i talk about supreme court supreme court judge retires at the age of 60 Five years, okay. So he has the ability. If he wants, he has the complete right to give the resign. If he want, the and the removal is being done by the president, as the same is in the case of the Supreme Court judge as well, Chief Justice of India. And the removal is done only on the basis if the president thought that he is not following the constitution proper properly. He is misbehaving with anyone. He proven to be misbehave with. Any any one he has the incapacity to do the process in a proper manner only then the president has the authority to remove that judge from the post okay so moving further definitely if the president wants to remove the judge from the post the impeachment procedure is also being done there impeachment procedure you all are aware that the in the parliament a voting was done there and two third majority when present there the voting is going on there whether the judge will continue down or the judge will be Uh, taken out from that particular court okay and after the when the majority vote down the judge is not working properly or judge is working against the con- constitution definitely only then the judge is removed down from the post okay so the fact file is given here that is related with the advocate journal so advocate journal for each state is definitely appointed by the governor and you have to read it the fact file by yourself you here you came to know about the advocate journal okay so moving further now we are going to understand about the powers and the functions of the high courts so the different types of powers in the jurisdiction as well with the high court as well we had discussed it in the supreme court as well so the different types as in the supreme court we discussed down about the four parts so same is with the high court as well the first point is related with the three mains is three parts are main and one is considered as a miscellaneous or the other jurisdictions okay the first one is definitely related with the original jurisdiction original jurisdiction relates with the issue or the directions or order including the writ or any person authority or the government within the jurisdiction violation of the fundamental rights if any person found that their rights are being their fundamental rights are being uh, destroyed down only then he has a complete right to go to the high court under the original jurisdiction okay and the second one is related with the appellate jurisdiction appellate re- jurisdiction le- uh, definitely relates with the appeal and it gives a part to the high court to hear the appeal about the civil and criminal cases against the decision like the decision is being taken by the district court but a person thought that his the district court or the local court does not give a proper decision or does not give a fair decision so he has a complete right to go to the high court 
the third one is related with an administrative jurisdiction so administrative jurisdiction actually related with the subordinate court to check out or to sub uh, supervise the court subordinate courts so whether they are doing the things with the journal rules and regulations or the proceeding is done under the proper control or along with under the control of the constitution or not so all such kind of a things are being checked down by the high courts because lower courts or subordinate court came under the high court okay so the next one is related with other jurisdiction or the miscellaneous jurisdiction so definitely that includes the people interest the interest of the public uh, that is being checked out by the supreme court as well uh, we had discussed down the public interest litigation and along with that the they check out the contempt uh, contempt of the proceeding against anyone who found to contempt of the court okay so moving further now we are going to discuss down about the subordinate courts or the district courts as several courts are there at the lower level that is known as a subordinate courts or the at the district level there is district courts as each state is divided into districts for the the state government is checking out uh, to the or the state high court is checking out to the district court so state government appoint the judge of the district courts okay district judge is being presided over by the state government or being appointed by the state government okay so moving further what is included here as there may be number of additional judges or the assistant judges depending on the workload of that particular district court so the district judge is there along with that additional judges are given to him and the assistant district judges are also given to him it depends on how much workload they have and definitely the appointment of the district judge is being done by we had already discussed down by the state government after the consultation of the high court of the state okay so the consultation is definitely taken from the high court of the state while choosing up or while appointing the district judge okay so what is included here it has a power to impose any punishment including the capital puni uh, punishments okay it deals with the cases of appeal from the lower court it has there are many other courts lower than the district court uh, court of district and the session so that include definitely for the civil sessions civil session the court or the civil judge senior divisions and the junior division the second one is related with the criminal cases that goes to the chief judicial magistrate and the judicial magistrate district court perform the different functions which are being performed by the district courts are given here the list of function are given here the first one is related with the case arising within the district so each and every case that is arising within that district like we are living in the muksar district so the case that is arising in the muksar district is definitely goes to the district court and the second one is related with the civil dispute that prevails like the pro, uh, property dispute the uh, pro, uh, problem with the land land dispute so the judge passed down the judgment on that as well the third one is definitely related with the maintenance of the peace in that particular district if the someone is there who is violating the peace of that district definitely the court goes to the district level or the district court okay the case goes to the district court and the fourth one is definitely Definitely relates with the considered appeal on the decision given to the lower court. The decision which is being taken by the lower court, they check out that and uh, give the appeal or to check out the rechecking of the decision will be done by the district court of the lower courts. Okay. So what happen at that times so the problem of district court is that they tend to create a large black, uh, backlog of cases. Backlog of the cases are we always. heard in india the cases are going to be like in the next hearing we will announce the result in the next hearing even the sometimes a case goes to 10 to 15 years and the no result will be declared down that is the reason of the so that the reason behind that is there is number of cases in the present scenario at the district courts they have a lot of work and that is the reason their case backlog of the cases the uncompletion of the cases or the delay of the 
cases because the workload on the district courts is too court is too much and that is the reason the unnecessarily delay is being done on the cases okay so there are some people as well like if i talk about the poor people who are unable to go to the court they thought that they even to file the case in the court we need a judge uh, we need a lawyer and lawyer is definitely demanding the fees or oh, time is required there uh, even that money is required to file down the case in a particular court but the poor people are not that much capable because they are a daily wages they get their daily wages so they are not able to get that um, much time and they are not able to give that much money for the filing of the case so for those people there is lok adalat so every indian citizen has an easy access to the court it is very much clear but if they feel that their rights are violated they can approach in the court of the justice however it is difficult for the poor people to get justice as a legal procedure involving lot of money and paper uh, work so in order to reach the deprived if the parliament enacted the legal services authorities act 1987 as what is included in this act it provide for the settlement of the dispute to the lok adalat in this act the lok adalat was there that is very much approachable to the poor people so who the person who is unable to go to the court they go to the lok adalat and their cases going on from there so they work free of cost no courses being taken from the uh, by these people amicable settlement is done by these people so here is impartial and independent judiciary given so definitely the lok adalat help us to resolve the dispute with free of cost and that is the reason it is very much beneficial for the poor people so the next and the last concept which is left is definitely related with the impartial and independent judiciary impartial impartial related with no discrimination is done with any of the person a fair judgment is given to each and every person so impartial is related with a fair judgment no partiality is done with any of the person so definitely in india there is impartial and independent judiciary no dependence is done on the judiciary is not dependent on any of the authority whether it is government whether it is any other person or a very renowned or a rich person so independence judiciary is going on there okay so definitely what is included in the independence judiciary independence judiciary is the first and foremost step towards the democracy because independence judiciary definitely hear the voice of the common people as well they take down the decision independently and the process is going on in a fair manner the judicial process is not ever gone in unfair manner even the people if they try to influence the judicial process the indian constitution does not allow them it means the judiciary is not following the constitution so definitely they have a risk to be ended down or the chief justice of india or the chief justice of state has a complete risk to end up their post so definitely they have to take down the decision in a fair and a correct manner so the separation of powers in the independence judiciary is going on there so what is included in the separation of power the legislature and the executive cannot interfere in the work of judiciary so the legislative assembly or the parliament is has got no right to check out or to interfere in the work of the judiciary they interfere in the work of the supreme court high court so the local courts okay so the appoint payment tenures and pay all such kind of things are controlled under the constitution so as it is also being independent the judiciary is considered as an independent one so all the judges in the high court as well as supreme courts are appointed with very little interference of other branches of the government once it is appointed it is very much difficult for the removal of the judges as we had discussed down if the judge of the supreme court or the high court is once appointed by the president and after that they had to give a lot 
lot of uh, the proper impeachment process is there after that the removal is possible of that particular judge okay no illegal manner is going on there and even if the judge find that the court is an uh, if even if the judge find that the parliament passes the law is not being necessary one or against the constitution norms and rules he has the complete authority to say that law null or void okay so no acceptance of that law is being necessary from the supreme court if the court demands that if the court feel that that law is not necessary one whether the president sign is there or not whether the approval of all parliament is going on there but if the supreme court thought that it is not again it is not following the constitutional norm so the supreme court directly considered it void or null or it is considered it illegal okay so the like act is definitely the law is definitely destroyed at that time period so moving further here is one picture given so look at the picture here first you have seen this image before so first question is related with whose statue is shown in this picture so the lady justice definitely the statue of lady justice is shown in this picture the second question definitely relates with what does the statue signifies that statue signifies fair and equal administration of law without corruption without prejudice or law okay so the fair and equal administration of law is going on no corruption is acceptable in our constitution and no corruption is acceptable in our judiciary system as well they always take an impartial decision so here is a case study given of that is judicial impartiality how is the judiciary give a fair in justice to a women that name of the women is jessica lal so a fair judgment is given definitely we will discuss down this case study what is included in the case study a woman is there that the name of the woman is jessica lal the jessica lal met down with the murder because it is considered as a murder case and the murder occurred on 30th april 1999 at that time jessica was 34 year old and she is considered as a delhi based model and she shoot down just for the demand, just for the sake of bottle of liquor one person came there and he demanded the liquor from jessica because jessica is working at the bar and the person is demanded liquor from them and jessica said to him that the court rule is not to sell the court rule is related with not to sell liquor after 12:30 am now it is 130 am so i am not going to give you the bottle of liquor that uh, person is vinod sharma that is an influential congress that belongs to a congress leader party okay so the person is belonging to a congress party you can able to identify the person has a lot of wealth and the lot of renouncement as well so jessica refuses him that is the reason the vinod sharma shoot down the jessica and even the uh, during that time period even manu offered him 1000 rupees to jessica but jessica refuses that if the, after that the manu took out the pistol and fired continuously to the jessica and jessica met with the murder okay so jessica met with lot of uh, problem just by following the laws which is in the constitution or which is given by the people or uh, which is given under the law so after that what happens the case goes to the high court and high court sentenced him to the lifetime imprisonment Pu puri life ki use jail announce kar di gayi high court mein on 20th december 2006 and after the high court verdict the court goes uh, the case definitely because that person is belongs to that political party so he has a he must pursued further the case goes to supreme court by challenging that the high court verdict is impartial and high court has, does not give the proper verdict after the complete hearing of the case again so supreme court 
also give him the verdict also sentence that the life imprisoned on 19th april 2010 to that particular person so this is one of the case that shows that our judiciary is working in an independent manner is working in an impartial manner so as jessica lal justice is being given by the judiciary and by giving sentence to manu lifetime jail okay so here are question given so firstly we will read down the question and after that answer them the first question is definitely related with who appoints the chief justice of india so definitely the chief justice of india is being appointed by the president of india the second one is related with how many high courts are there in our country we had already discussed down when we are reading the high court part so how many high courts are there in our country so definitely there are 24 high courts in our country okay so the third one is related with why is an independent judiciary necessary as you can able to understand from the case study as well why the independent judiciary is necessary an independent judiciary is essential in order to uphold democracy so that judicial process cannot be influenced by anyone okay so hope you are clear with this chapter in this chapter what we had discussed down we started about the judiciary we came to know about the various cases that came under the judiciary or which is consulted down in the courts the first one is related with the criminal case and the second one is civil cases so criminal laws are there civil laws are there after that we came to know about the structure of the judiciary here is the structure of judiciary is there so apex court in new delhi is there that is known as supreme court or supreme court is considered as an highest court of the country and second after the supreme court there is high court and after the high court high court is at the state level highest court of the state that is definitely the high court and there are 21 high courts in india and after that there is district court further we came to know about we discussed down in detail about the supreme court and after that to be discussed down in detail about the high court how is our comp position of high court how many judges are there eligibility criteria and tenure period okay further we came to know about the powers and functioning of the high court and along with that we discussed down in detail about the district courts and the subordinate courts and even some people are there who are quite poor and who are unable to approach these courts for them we discussed down that there is lok adalat as well so people the lok adalat works free of cost and settle down the dis lot of disputes so those people had free to go to the lok adalat along with that we came to know that our judiciary is working in an independent manner or in impartial manner always a free decision and free and fair decision is being taken by our judiciary so hope you are clear with the chapter so what your homework is now after watching the video you have to read down the chapter from the book thoroughly by yourself and after reading the chapter what you have to do you have to complete down the exercise which is given at the end of the chapter and try to solve this exercise by yourself without the help of any other person